Different Studio. Pick up your brush today. Hello everyone, welcome to the Ink Different Studio. This is Fiona speaking. Today we're going to talk about the overview of the history of the Oriental landscape painting. We call it either mountain water painting, literally shan shui, or water ink painting or ink water painting. So shui mo, water ink painting it is. The Oriental landscape painting was probably one of the very, very early painting styles in the world. And the remaining paintings that we can see today, of course, we were talking about over 2000 years ago, the paintings at that time were not exactly available to us anymore. But Gu Kaizhi, one of the most famous Oriental painters, Chinese painters in the Jin Dynasty, two of his artworks still remained in the world, as you can see in the screen right now. In the artworks of this early giant of this early master, it is quite clear what the landscape was playing as this role. So we see a lot of figures. So the figure painting at that time was still the most dominant style. But then starting from his period, we start to see the landscape existing in the backgrounds of these people. And even though they started as the backgrounds of the people painting, we can already start to see that the perspective change, what we call the cavalier style of perspective, where everything is a flow. Um, the panels, by the way, on the screen, they are supposed to be one complete painting put together. And we have to show it this way because otherwise it's a very, very long scroll, you know, those hand scrolls that uh, you can open very long. And you can already see in this piece of artwork that the landscapes are coherent in the background. You are moving along the painting as we talk, we're moving along the scenery as we walk. So in that early period, it was already apparent. So the Oriental landscape received a full development in the Tang Dynasty. So the Tang Dynasty is about 400 years after the starting point of the overall landscape painting style. And this person, Zhan Zixian, he was like a pioneer, the leading force developing and working on the landscape painting. This piece of artwork that you can see on the screen is probably the only and the earliest landscape painting that exists from the Eastern style. And this one talks about uh, a very early spring sensation where people are exiting their homes, coming out into the nature, and enjoying the landscape. Also, very interesting in the Tang Dynasty is that artists started to combine the calligraphy and the painting in one. So in this period of time, we start to see poetry being written down in the form of calligraphy combined with the painting itself. So we say there's painting in the poetry, and there's the poetry in the painting. Okay, moving on. So in the Song Dynasty, the oriental landscape paintings received a maturity. So in this period of time, even the society itself was able to fully develop. So even the economy got better. It was one of the most interesting periods of time, the Song Dynasty, where everything bloomed in the society, including the painting. Because of the history of the Song Dynasty, a lot of the uh, development happened in the southern part of the land of China. So therefore, in the painting specifically, instead of seeing the very northern mountains, northern landscape, we start to also see the very misty, very rainy, very mild kind of landscape that's typical in the south snow painting as well, by the way. When we see the northern mountains, the mountains go from the floor up to the sky, full of mountains, very rocky kind also. But in the south, normally, we start to see that the mountains are surrounded by fogs, and the water also connects with this fog. So it's a very different kind of uh, perspective. And that's actually one of the kinds I suppose you like the most too. But um, it was only then it was developed a bit more. And then in the Yuan Dynasty, so following the Song Dynasty, because of the expansion of the territory, everything launched. And uh, the artists came from absolutely everywhere. They were also able to travel. So the style of the landscape is even more diversified. So the Song and Yuan Dynasty also had the most amazing landscape painters. 
So following the Yuan Dynasty, we have the Ming and Qing Dynasty. Especially in the Ming Dynasty, everything continued. The glory continued until the very end of the empirical time of China. <laughs> For more information, check us out at inkdifferentstudio.com.